Rich of Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Today I want to talk to you about creatine, and no, not about whether or not creatine is actually a good supplement, because by now you should understand that it is probably one of the most well-researched, science-backed supplements that you can take, both for its safety and its efficacy. The, in, the, the interesting thing though is there's a lot of different forms of creatine that cause a lot of confusion and people really want to know what is the best form of creatine to take. So I wanted to cover that, especially considering the fact that in our Athlean RX supplement line, we do not use standard creatine monohydrate and it's for some very good reasons, I think. So I wanted to at least give you guys those, the, the, the clarity on that. In terms of our RX1, we have a form of creatine called creatine hydrochloride and in our post-workout RX2, we have creocalin. Now both of these, as opposed to a creatine monohydrate, are bonded forms of creatine. Some molecule is bound to the creatine to cause an effect, to cause a change versus the regular creatine monohydrate. In the creatine hydrochloride, the hydrochloride is bond and what it does is it actually lowers the pH of that substance. So the creatine now becomes a lower, more acidic compound. That's a good thing because what it, it does actually is it increases the, the absorbability and its ability to be absorbed in your intestines and also to be sort of mixed well. You'll notice that when, when you mix creatine monohydrate a lot of times it sinks right to the bottom and it looks like sand on the bottom. That's sort of a microcosm of what actually winds up happening in a lot of people when they take creatine monohydrate. That same sediment winds up making its way into your intestines and trying to be absorbed, you know, calling in more water to try to help with that absorption which winds up bloating you and giving you that bloated feeling if you've ever experienced that with regular creatine monohydrate. With the creatine hydrochloride, because you're doing that and you're increasing the ability to absorb more of it, you're actually able to take a lower dose. So it has a second benefit to you. You don't have to load with 20 grams anymore and you don't have to maintain dosages of five grams anymore. You could do it with a lot less. About two grams of a creatine, of a creatine hydrochloride is gonna be equivalent to about four grams of creatine monohydrate. So that's another benefit. And the third benefit is you're not getting as much breakdown into something called creatinine, which is a byproduct that you don't want to accumulate in your body, but happens because of the ingestion of creatine. Now the same thing happens here in our post-workout where we have creocalin, which is another bonded form of creatine, again, for the very same benefits. Now, the, the reason why we use that, you're getting now basically four grams and four grams based on their increased conversion value. So about a total of eight grams between the two. And we're dividing it again, pre-workout, post-workout. There's a lot of science that will argue for both times to take, the, uh, to take creatine. You can get it pre-workout to sort of benefit and increase your performance during the workout. And then other studies would argue that it's better to take after your training to sort of help replenish that. But the idea is as long as you're getting the steady maintenance in here, again, with less conversion to creatinine, you're doing a, a, a good thing for your body and performance without having the bad. Uh, one thing I'll say here is when people start looking at the research of whether or not the bonded form of creatine is better than creatine monohydrate, you have to understand this one main point. They're looking for increased power, increased strength. They're looking at the wrong metrics. Nobody ever said that these are going to have, give you more power generating benefits than a regular creatine monohydrate. It's going to give you the same benefits of a creatine monohydrate in terms of performance, but with all those added benefits I just told you about, the, the need to not have to cycle on and off. Some people, again, will say that you want to cycle because of the buildup of creatinine on and off of creatine monohydrate. You don't have to do that here. You're getting all those benefits, the same level of benefit and performance without having to have that. So throw away all those studies that are looking for it to be better than that in terms of performance. Look at it to be the same in terms of performance, but without those other effects. So guys, I hope you found this to be a little bit enlightening in terms of what it actually does. What's the difference? There's a whole hell of a lot of other differences in, in, in forms of creatine. Many, many, many other forms. People doing all new research all the time, bonding different molecules to creatine to see what kind of an effect it has. We're going to let the research talk and speak for itself as time plays out. But for now, by far, these are what I prefer. I think I get much better effects from it from my training and those that use our products. And I would recommend it if, if you're looking for a, a way to benefit and maximize your benefits of taking creatine. If you're looking for our Athlean RX supplement guys, you know where to find them. They're over at athleanrx.com. In the meantime, I want to try to continue to put the education back into supplementation. You know, it's not just about taking something blindly. It's about learning why you're taking it before you do. And I hope that our channel can do that. Let me know what other things you want me to try to cover here in future videos on supplements and I'll do my best to do that. All right guys, we'll be back here again in just a few days.